Hello, we had a good response to a puzzle that we tried a few days ago, which was from Cliff the Crafter, who created a sort of Minesweeper Sudoku variation. And that prompted an email we've just had from JJ. Uh, and JJ notes that from the Korean Sudoku community, there is a similar type of thing involving Minesweeper. And one of their very best puzzle makers, I think, has created the puzzle we're going to try today. Um, now, I'm not sure how difficult it's going to be, but we shall give it a go. Let me uh, find the puzzle. Here it is. Um, I'll explain the rules in a moment. If you want to have a go at the puzzle yourself, just click on the video under the, um, or click on the, the link under the video, and that will take you to our software where you'll, you'll see what I'm seeing. Now, in this puzzle, we need to fill the grid, or each box, each row, and each column with the numbers from 1 to 7. And in every uh, box, row, and uh, column, there will be two mines. And the grey cells tell us uh, basically minesweeper cells. So this, if this cell, for example, contained a four, that would say there needed to be four mines around the cell, including diagonals. So four mines in those positions there, which uh, you'll immediately see. Actually, we can fill in the value of this cell, thinking about it. Um, now, I'm going to try and uh, solve this for you now, um, and I'm going to start there. So I know that around the edge of this, because this cell must be a number, because it's greyed out, it will see two mines in its surrounding area. So I can actually fill in this square. That's going to be a two. You can see that means there's going to be a two in the grey areas down here. This cell this cell can't be a 2, but could only ever see one mine, because it can see these three squares. It obviously could not be a 3, because it can only see mines in its box. There can only be a maximum of two of those, so if it's not 2, which it's not because of this cell, this must be 1. Uh, now this square this, uh, this square is very interesting, this one here, because this could see, in theory, it could see two mines from this box, but it can't, because this square here is the only square it can see in this box, which could be a mine, because these two are both greyed out, so they must be numbers. So this could see one mine in this 3 by 3 block and a maximum of two mines in its own 3 by 3 box, so that must be a 3. This must be a mine. I'm going to colour mines in. I'm going to use red. So if something is red, that means it's a mine. We know one of these squares must be a mine and one of these squares must be a mine. This square cannot be a mine, so if a square cannot be a mine, I'm going to make that green. So we'll have a sort of traffic light signal for mines and not mines. Ah, oh, now, hang on. Uh, right, so we know one of these squares, one of these squares is a mine, so let's Therefore, exactly one of these three squares is a mine. So I'm going to use eights and nines to indicate possible mine positions. These two squares, therefore, can be must also include a nine. So I'm just wondering about this square. So this square could see, ignoring what's in the grid, it could see a maximum of four mines, i.e. two from its own box and two from this box. So, but it sees a three and a two. So we're looking at a, a one or a four situation, but it cannot see four mines because we know exactly one mine is in these three squares. So this is in fact a one. And the one is made up of the mine it sees in this box. So these three cells are green. And therefore, there's exactly one mine in these two. Oh, hang on, no. There needs to be two mines in this box, so there's exactly two mines there. And this square, well, if we look at Sudoku, sees one mine from this 
this position it can see a maximum of two mines here but it can't be three so it must be a two and there's a mine in one of those two positions uh, now this this must be a one now mustn't it because it can't be a two or a three it can see a maximum of two mines so it must be one because it can't be two because of this two and this is the mine it sees so these three squares are green this is lovely I'm enjoying this so this is red now we know there's two mines in this three by three block and one of them is in one of those two positions um, now this square can see a maximum of two mines and it can't be a one so this is a two and therefore this must be a mine <laughs> And now these four squares here are in the same column as two mines, so they are not mines. This one is okay because we know this one is not in a grade area, so it must see, it cannot see one mine, it already sees two, so that's fine. Uh, sees two mines, that's fine. Ah, we've got two mines looking row three, so all of these squares are green. Delete the mine from there. Um, ah, and we've got two mines here, so all of these squares are green as well. And that means this is a mine. <coughs> now this square is interesting because in theory this could see four mines but it can't see any mines from this box because of these green squares so this must be a two can't be a one because of the one here and we know it's correct it sees this mine so there must be a mine in one of these two positions so let's label that and make these two squares therefore green so we've got two mines now in this box in we need, we need two mines in column one, we've got none yet, so we know they're both here, so these are all green. Uh, now, I feel like I'm being slow now. Uh, da, 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 what can we do? This is going to see one mine, one, one. Can label some ones into these two squares. Uh, ones, threes, threes. There must be ah, there must be a three in one of those two positions. We've not really explored this central box yet, but perhaps this square is interesting. This can't be a one because it's already seeing ones, and in fact we can write in the value we've managed to deduce everything about this box haven't we it sees three mines so that's where I should have been going next so that sees three mines now this square now cannot be one two or three and it can see a maximum of four mines so, so this is a four and therefore these two must both be mines <laughs> Okay, now this square can't be one, two, three, or four. Good lord, is that right? So this must be five, I think. And it could be five if I make that a mine. So that's a five. This is a mine. This is not a mine. Let's resolve the eights there. We don't need those anymore. Does this see three mines? Oh, well, it will do once I place one of these two, so that's fine. And this square, now we can write in. This square must be two because it sees two mines and it can't see anything else. Good, so that's working. Two, two. This must be a two by Sud Sudoku rules because this is a mine. Therefore, this is not a two. And this square here already sees two mines, but might see a lot more mines in a minute. 
fact this whole box is quite interesting, isn't it? We should be thinking about this more. This square cannot see mines in this box. It's impossible. And it cannot be a 2 because we've just ruled out the 2 because of this. So this square can see a maximum of 1 mine. Which means this is a 1. Again, that's a simple Sudoku, nothing clever about that. And as this, these two squares here are green, this is green, this is green, just looking at the row here. One of these squares exactly must be a mine. So let's fill that in like that. One of these two squares must be a mine as well. Which means there's exactly one mine in these two squares, which means this is not a mine. These two squares now must be mines. Okay, let's look at this square. How many mines can this square see? Well, it can see a maximum of this mine and one of these two mines. We know it can't be a one, so it must be a two. Now this square is not a two now, and this needs to see, well, this could, oh, this can't be three. And it, the most it can be is four if both of these squares is a mine. So that must therefore be true. Elementary, my dear Watson. Um, so let's remove some of these pencil marks now. This square here must be uh, green. This four here, now this can be three and is three. Perfect, so that looks correct. Ah, no, that's it actually, I said this is three because I wasn't looking at this square. Obviously it cannot be four. In theory it could be four, but we've already got a four in the box. That resolves that this is the mine here. These two are green. And two, two, Ah, that's interesting. We know that there must be a... T oh, that's in fact the 2 must go there. But I was going to say we could actually have eliminated this from being a 2 anyway because if the 2 was here, it would have had to be in grey. And we know it's not grey, so therefore... Um, now, we have to be a bit careful here, though, because this 2 is not grey. Therefore, th this cannot be a mine which we knew anyway actually because we've got those two mines in there so it's been being slow as usual okay two, one, two. whoa this square is now interesting isn't it because this square has to be a five or a six good lord As you can see, this square, this square here already sees five mines. It might see a sixth, depending on what this is. Um, and we've done, I think we've done all of the other mine positions. So how do I resolve this? Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly. Sure, there's a way. I'm just not seeing it. So let's let's put in some more numbers. So down here, this must be one, six, and seven, which makes this a six actually. So let's put that six in. Uh, these two squares are one and seven in some order. Therefore, these two squares are four and five. And we have a four here, so we're starting to be able to use normal Sudoku. These two squares are six and seven as well. Five, five. There's a five in one of those two positions. <coughs> and a 7 in the other position. So actually I could label those like this. This square must be a 4. Uh, 2 here. 1 here. I feel like I'm missing something really obvious. Um, this square must be a 4 because it's the only green cell in its row. Therefore, we've got three, six, and seven along these three squares, which means this is a one. This is the seven here. Let's put three, six, and seven into the row. Uh, four, six. Now, 
Now along here we still need to place one, six and seven as well. And we've got one in this position and one in this position. So this is going to be the one. I'll move the one here. This is a six or a seven and this is a six or a seven. In fact, this 7 here, we know the 7 is in one of those two squares. I'm not really sure where it goes up there, so we have to label everything. 6, 7, 6, 7, 4, 4. So 4 in one of those two positions. Have we done all the 1s? Yes, we've done all the 1s. We've done all the 2s, I think. We haven't yet done all the three, so maybe the three is the next place to look. There must be a three in one of those two squares. Just wondering whether we can use this one to resolve the positions here. It's probably what I'm meant to do. Uh, So either, either neither of these cells, ah yeah, that is what I'm meant to do, isn't it? Because of this square here. So this square being a mine means these two squares cannot be both mines. Now as these squares cannot both be mines, I cannot make one of them a mine, otherwise this cell would be grey. Ergo, neither of these cells is a mine. There we go, right. A bit of logic gets you a long way. And now, all of a sudden, we're able to make progress. So this becomes the mine over here. And this square, therefore, is resolved to be a 6. And apologies for being so slow. Goodness me. Um, so now I need 4. And, so this must be a 4. This is now a 5. These two squares are 6 and 7. I have to do that like that. Uh, 6, 6, 5, 7. Let's have a look along here. We need to put a 3 somewhere in row 3 of the grid. That's going to have to be there. This square must be a 5 or a 7 now. We've got a 6, 7 double in column 9. So these two squares have to be 4 and 5. And we have a 4 there. So this, this square is 4. This square is 5. This square is 6. This square is 5 or 7. Um, this square obviously is no longer 7. And it's no, it, well, it was a 9, so that we can just remove the 9s now. Um, this square we can remove the 8 from. <coughs> We've got a 5, 7 pair here, that's normal. And 3, 5, 7. Bar humbug, where is the next easy? Easy win. Um, six, seven, five. Ah, there's a five there. Look, by normal Sudoku rules. Therefore, we get a five in one of those two squares. This must be a three. Again, normal Sudoku. This three here is forcing this to be a three because this can only be a six or a seven. And this is a three by the same logic using this three and this three makes this a 5, that 5, that a 7, that a 5, that a 7. And perhaps we're now closing in on a solution. What a brilliant puzzle. Um, so this is now a 6 or a 7, and this 6 is going to allow us to chain everything, I think. Absolutely brilliant. Um, now, have I filled in everything? It's a bit hard to tell with all of these colours. And I obviously, by the way, our software will not tell you whether this is correct or not, because the software at the moment is simply checking whether or not every row, column and box contains the numbers from 1 to 9. Now, obviously, um, that's not the case for this particular variant, so I wouldn't bother to rely on the checker to tell you. I'm just... I think it looks correct to me. I'm looking for repeated digits, not seeing any. Um, and I think the logic I used was fairly tight for making sure that we had the right numbers. 
for the mines. I love that. Fantastic. So thank you very much to the Korean Sudoku community for recommending this puzzle. JJ, much appreciated. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.